So today we're going to be talking about uh, expected goals, uh, some variations of it and what it means, and we're going to apply it to the Premier League. So look at some of the best and worst players in the Premier League and use it. Right. You want to start it off? Yeah, I'll start it off. So basically expected goals uh, measures how good a shot is um, or how good a chance, I guess, of scoring that shot is. So, for instance, um, a penalty would be a pretty high expected goal, while a free kick from 40 yards out would be very low. And, um, you know, a number of factors uh, play a role into indicating what exactly the expected goal is, um, you know, assist type, shot angle, distance from goal, shot type, and um, whether it's defined as a big chance. And expected goal um, accumulates over the course of the entire match. And it can be anywhere from zero to one. So like, for instance, a goal, like a few feet off the goal line would be really high, like close to one, but like a shot from the halfway line would be basically zero. So like 0 0.001. And over the course of a match or a season, um, that number can be accumulated and we'll get into more in depth how they track that in the next couple slides. You want to take this one, Valentina? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, this would be how you calculate an expected goal. So yeah, like Charlie just said, um, it depends on, so it's from zero to one. And the closer the shot is to the goal, the more likely it is to be scored, meaning it'd be closer to one. And if you're shooting from, like he said, halfway point, it's definitely going to be closer to zero. So yeah, statisticians will calculate expected goal by looking at the success rate of over 300,000 shots. So. Yeah, pretty simple. Um, so how can it be used? Um, a lot of teams use it to kind of track how well either a player or a team is performing. So, you know, for instance, um, say a player had an expected goals of 10. That means with all the chances they had, they should have 10 goals, but they might have actually had only five goals. And because of that, that means they're not doing well because they should have more. And that can be used vice versa. Um, some players overperform expected goals like crazy, while others um, tend to struggle with it. Um, it can also be used to track how well teams do. So for instance, um, a team like Manchester City it's a great example. They have the ball all the time in their match. Like they usually have like 70% of possession and tend to accumulate a lot of shots on goal. And because of that, their expected goal tends to be pretty high. While a team like Tottenham, um, that's my team, they play much more counterattacking defensive soccer. So they only have a few shots on target. And um, because of that, their expected goal is really low. And, um, you know, you can track how well a team can do over the course of a season just by looking at their expected goals and what they've accumulated so far. Yeah, you even talked about that a lot in your article. I remember like when looking at Harry Kane and yeah. everything. Yeah, definitely. yeah, I think um, we have a slide coming up where I talk about my article, so I'll plug that a little bit too. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so there's also variations of expected goals. So there's expected assists, which would measure the likelihood uh, a given pass will become a goal assist. Um, or non-penalty expected goals. Then there's just goals minus expected goals, which I think we're also gonna talk about a little later. Um, shows if a player is over or underperforming, just like Charlie was just saying. Um, if you have an expected goal of 10, if a player has an expected goal of 10 and he underperforms with only five or six goals um, in the season or whatever, however long, um, yeah, then he's obviously underperformed. So then there's non-penalty goals minus uh, yeah, non-penalty goals. And then there's uh, expected goal contributions, so. Yeah, any penalty counts as um, 0.75 expected goals because I guess from those 300,000 shots they analyzed, 75% um, of them ended up being goals, so. Yeah, so there's a few issues with expected goals, you know, as all people like think about sports analytics, you know, a lot of people tend to discourage using the numbers to like, I guess, assess performance or whatnot. But, you know, I think a lot of people are beginning to um, accept expected goals as being a really 
important part of like, uh, you know, analytics and uh, statistics and soccer. Um, but some of the big issues include um, weak foot um, is not currently being taken into account for expected goals. So, you know, there's a lot of players who um, tend to prefer shooting a certain foot, like little Messi is a great example. He's like one of the best left footed shooters in the world, but if he takes a shot on his right foot, it wouldn't be the same uh, success rate, I guess, as if he took it on his left foot. So that's one issue. And then another issue is, um, you know, say a player uh, crosses the ball in to a player and the one who's trying to shoot ends up missing the ball. Um, well, that's a great chance and you would expect a goal to come from it. If they didn't make contact with the ball, then that expected goal is just zero. So it kind of has some issues like that where it doesn't tell the full sto story of the game, but for the most part, you know, as long as the shot's taken off, then um, expected goals can be used to track the performance of the team or player. And it's still pretty new. So I'm sure they're going to look into this type of thing to try and uh, make it more accurate. But Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So now kind of taking everything that we just talked about, we're going to apply it to um, the premier league for the 2019, 2020 season. So Yep. Yeah. So if you look over to the left, um, Jamie Vardy ended up winning the golden boot with 23 goals. And he also had the highest expected goals throughout the season with 19.8. So we did have um, an overperformance. Um, he ended up overperforming his expected goals by uh, 3.2 goals. But, you know, there are players who overperformed that. Um, how well he did. So Harry Kane, for example, I think he ended the season with like 20 goals and just from expected goals alone, though, he was expected to score like close to 12 goals. So that kind of shows how good he is at finishing and, um, you know, scoring hard chances. And then, um, you know, using non-penalty goals, uh, Danny Ings scored 21 of them. So he led the league in that non-penalty expected goals. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, ended with 17.7 .7, and he plays for Manchester city, which is, you know, a team that ends up having a really high expected goals tally as a team because they always have the ball and always end up getting shots on target. And I believe we talk about this later. i um, in a later slide, but um, sorry about that. Expected goals. Sorry. My roommates are yelling at me, so I'm kind of losing my train of thought a bit, but um Gabriel Jesus had 17.7 .7 expected goals, but ended up with less than that, meaning his finishing abilities aren't on par with Harry Kane. And I believe we talked about that later in the slide. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is definitely the slide you were just talking about, but I can start it off and then you can add on to that if you want to. So yeah, individual winners and losers using expected goals. So we just talked about Harry Kane. So obviously he overperformed by a lot um, in this season. So he stood out as a player who yeah outperformed his expected goals. And uh, he also led the league in goals minus expected goals, meaning he scored over seven goals more than he should have. So yeah, like Charlie said, definitely a really good finisher. Um, and this is just helpful because in looking at um, like when teams are analyzing other teams and you look at someone like Harry Kane, they know, oh, if Harry Kane is in the game that day, they can expect something from him as opposed to, you know, if he's on the bench, if he's not playing, they'll know the team is going to be completely different that day. That's kind of what expected goals helps out with in terms of just predicting and like, I don't know, I think it's definitely helpful in that way. But yeah, and then he also mentioned um, Gabriel Jesus, who should have performed better this season. So since he underperformed, um, he scored uh, over four less goals than the amount that was expected of him. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Go back. Oh, you're good. Yeah. I was going to talk about my blog post. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I think next slide, though. I yeah, perfect. So I wrote this blog post in, um, I think it was like August or September just like basically as a review of the season um, by using expected goals instead of actual goals. So I went game by game throughout the entire season and um, looked at the accumulation of expected goals rather than the actual goals. And by doing that, um, it was actually pretty cool to see that Manchester City ended up winning the league and Liverpool, who 
seemed like they dominated this, like that entire season, um, actually finished third. And I think the main reason for that is really because Liverpool um, relied on more of a counter-attacking, uh, fewer shots per game than Manchester City did. Uh, they also scored some really great goals last season, Liverpool, that you know would have contributed very low expected goals just because players wouldn't be expected to score them. So I think um, the main finding from that was, although Liverpool definitely deserved to win the league, um, their individual performances and some great counterattacking football is what you know ended up winning them that season. So, yeah, it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, that's about all we had. So thank you, Roger, for coming. You know, hope you learned a little bit and had a good time. Yeah, thank you. I know I've learned a lot about XG and I, I think it's pretty interesting to see how this season will look in terms of the final standings and results. Uh, yeah. yeah, what team do you support? Do you have like a favorite team? Are, are you a Premier League guy or? Yeah, I'm a Manchester United fan. I'm pretty interested in English football in general. Not just the Premier League, but also the Championship and League One, League Two. Yeah, yeah, Championship is awesome. I like to follow the uh, playoffs at the end of the season. Yeah, really cool. If you're a Man U fan, um, congratulations. I'm an AC Milan fan, so past Ooh. two games Ooh. we played against each other, pretty rough for me. I, I mean, to be fair, it's a pretty close game. I've gone either way, but it's just that. Defensively, we were more solid. So no, you guys were stronger. I'll, I'll yeah. give you. you guys were stronger. That was a pretty crazy draw for that early in the competition too. Yeah. Two um, huge names. Yeah, Tottenham didn't do too well in Europa League either. So yeah, I don't want to be thinking about that. But <laughs> that's all right. No, I was pretty excited for those matches because I I feel like it's the first time Man U and AC Milan have played in a really really long time. And those yeah. So I feel like that's like a classic. Uh, Definitely a classic. Yeah. 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 Two yeah. very historic teams. Yeah. It used to be a Champions League fixture. <laughs> and then with the semifinals, yeah. and quarterfinals. Yeah. There used to be two powerhouses of European football. Won a lot of Syria and Premier League titles in like the 2000s. Yeah. Some great teams. Early 2000s. I think I might have cut out there. I'm sorry. Um, but when I started like really, really loving AC Milan was like 2008, 2009. And that team was insane. Like I'm obviously I still love them now. And, you know, they're doing <laughs> with Ibra and everything. But like back then, oh, my God. Those were like world beaters. That's yeah. like a dream team. There was like Ronaldinho, Kaka, yeah. that oh, team. Yeah. yeah. That was one of my favorites. Um, yeah, it was awesome. It's all right. They've got Ibra now. Yeah, uh, exactly. some good guys. However long he continues to play. Sorry. All right, so I think that about wraps it up. I don't know if there's anything else on Expectacles we want to cover, but. No, I mean, I think I'm good too. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Roger. All right, thank you. We'll see you next time. Yep. Have a good time.